Today, we have a special treat for fans of cyberpunk and science fiction in general. Joining us is the talented sci-fi and fantasy author, Kit Kerr. And we're going to discuss her fantastic 1990 Polar City Blues. So let's just dive right into this because it's a very grounded and human story on an interstellar scale. So I just got to start off with welcome, Kit. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Brian. This is very nice. So I, I'm not going to lie. The first time I saw this Alan Daniels cover, I was like, I have to read this book. And I, I'm so <laughs> glad that uh, it's part of the Postmark from the Stars reading challenge this year. So can you give us like a brief teaser or like, how did you come up with Polar City Blues? Well, I came up, I did not come up with the idea. My subconscious mind did. I'm one of those writers who's called the pantser that you get a beginning of something and keep going. And so I don't really know where it came from, uh, aside from the fact that I like cyberpunk and I like mysteries. But yeah, I, I'm, this was a long time ago. I remember now, I had bronchitis in 1989. And as I was lying there, with, you know, the conscious mind turned off. The whole, uh, the whole beginning unrolled. And then once I got well and started, the book just went. It's one of those gifts. Talk about taking a, uh, a, a crappy time and turning something beautiful out of it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, people don't really write with their conscious minds. That's why some authors drink so much, which I don't. But, uh, you know, because they can't stand not being in control. <laughs> it makes sense, though. It does. Uh, OK, so, you know, this book was released, obviously, in the 90s, and it still stands up incredibly well. You know, I was going to make fun of the baseball aspect, but I'm from southwest Ohio and the Cincinnati Reds are doing amazing right now. So baseball is all of a sudden very back in vogue in, in the greater Dayton area. So uh, but I had, like all jokes aside, though key aspects of this book um, and like the imaginative world building still very much so stand up today. So can you tell us a little bit about the city and the atmosphere that you aimed to, to create with this one? Okay. Well, basically what I aimed to create was just a good, mysterious, you know, different than Earth atmosphere. However, as I've said earlier, um, I was already afraid of ch climate change warnings back in 1990. Unfortunately, I was right. And so the book, one of the things is, is that it shows a planet where climate change has just run out of control before even it was settled. And so you've, what you have is a story of humans trying to cope in a very unfamiliar climate, while at the same time live their ordinary lives and then solve a horrible mystery. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really surprised at well, I'm not surprised at how badly climate change went. We all should have known, but anyway. Well, you know, it's funny because this uh, this is one of those books that has actually a lot of characters in it. And yeah. there's a variation of points of view. So it's not just following one person. It's not just following the other person's, you know, a, a nemesis, if you will. There's a lot of different views with a laundry list of memorable characters. And I was just curious, you know, I know it's been a minute since you wrote this book, but are there any characters that you still like love from Polar City Blues? Well, Nunx has always been my favorite, the guy with the bifurcate skull. And uh, I'm of course very fond of Lacey. You know, we all would like to be like Lacey. But anyway, I actually, I, I enjoy the whole lot, except of course for the uh, perpetrator. But Mrs. Bug is also okay. But oh, nothing. So I'm talking about a lot of characters. I want to make a point because it, in 1990, this was very unusual. And the thing is, is that there's only a few white people in that book. Most people are people of color. I did that on purpose. I don't know if anyone noticed. I well, did. Good. Yay. Good for you. Good for you. And, and it was something because I, but like I said, I actually got a, one very negative review because of that, because some an old guard science fiction type, where are the white heroes? Mulligan is disgusting, you know? <laughs> Good, too bad. Go back to Latvia, AJ. But, <laughs> but I do want to be I All of my books have a lot of characters. I don't know. I must be somewhat crazy in there because I my mind is full of people. You know, when I start to write, they just come out and they take over. And I don't, I'm not one of those authors who makes a list about characteristics, favorite hobby. No, forget that. Forget that. Uh, they speak to me, I record them. They speak about to it. you and you record them. That's a good quote in itself. That's really how it feels. That's really so, how it feels. 
So I got to say this, though, because I've I've read hundreds of sci-fi books and I love science fiction. And this might sound kind of ridiculous because I'm seemingly selective with what books I actually read. I actually map it out like a year in advance. But, um, <laughs> you know, like I, I'm actually not that big of a detective novel fan. But like I found myself reading books like Chasm City by Alistair Reynolds. And, you know, I'm like, oh, I just read a sci-fi detective novel. And I was, I got probably halfway through this book and I was like, I think I actually do like sci-fi detective novels. So, and I think it's because it's the perfect genre to allow a reader to explore an environment and, and learn about the, the space the story's taking place in and like a not info dumpy, like exposition nonstop kind of way. And um, I just, I'm curious, like, how did you approach merging, you know, science fiction and writing like a good detective novel? How did you merge those two? Like, what was your process? Well, same process as always. I was a bit surprised to find out what I was writing. Uh, I've always liked a good detective novel, though, the British kind in particular. I don't like the ones where thousands of people die, you know, but one really weird mur murder and a good detective. And so the, the pattern was in my brain. Is there anything I can think of? And so I just, I knew how to handle it. Once I realized what was going on, that this the murder that starts the story was going to be the central event. Well, then, of course, from there, you can just keep going with the uh, genre. But well, basically, I don't you know how I do these things, Brian. I really don't. Just, <laughs> well, can I just say, regardless of how you do it, I'm glad that you did, because I love okay. the story. <laughs> okay, well, I'm writing a new cyberpunk punk mystery now. In fact, I just finished it. It's at The Agent. It's going to be called Haze. It takes place in the same world as Polar City, but 2,000 years later, and all sorts of things have changed. It's not on Polar City. It's in a number of other planets. But it so takes I don't place know, in the same universe? universe? Hmm? But it takes place in the same universe? Yeah. Really. Well, you'll see the same uh, 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 alien races, and there's a lot of... and the. That fleet, the, the space fleet that Lacey belonged to, has basically taken over the universe. <laughs> and so it's different. It's a, it's also a little bit military, but not much because, you know. But the mystery is a, a group of uh, military people and special ops have been sent out to solve a mystery. And one of them is a lap, which is the proper name for Lizzie's. There are car leads in it. Uh, <laughs> and the, the whole atmosphere, I think, is very similar. Well, I but, like, cannot wait to get, get my hands yet. on that. That is very okay. exciting to get my hand on that. Um, wow. Well, I'm I, have, I have written other science fiction, too. You know, um, Snare, for instance. I don't know if you've read that. That's not a mystery. Well, actually, it is in a way. It's a mystery. Somebody's trying to find out exactly how did, the hell did we get to this rotten planet anyway. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's an adventure story, basically, in search of information. I think it's still in print in Britain. It's just called Snare. That's the name. Snare. All right. Well, I'm going to throw up an image right here of the cover of Snare so people can <laughs> see what we're, what we're talking about because I, I don't have a copy in front of me. But, you know, I just think you did such a good job. Of well, thank you. I appreciate it. Polar City, uh, a good book, a great book, but also just a memorable place that, like, I actually could see myself exploring and wanting to visit. And, um, you know, if you're if you're watching this interview and you're craving a detective novel and you're craving some interstellar vibes from a sci fi cyberpunk perspective, I cannot recommend Polar City enough. And um, really just you just shared your your upcoming continuation of this universe that's on its way. So I cannot wait. Uh, jump into the description. I'll share information once that book uh, is published. And um, really, I just don't forget to uh, keep an eye out for Kit's uh, other books because she's such a talented author. Kit, any last words while you're with us today? Um, well, not really. Oh, I should make one thing clear. There are two kinds of authors. Some outline. My good friend Kate Elliott outlines everything in advance. To me, that would be boring. <laughs> I, she, doesn't, she doesn't understand how I can possibly just say, well, here's the beginning. Let's go. It drives her nuts. So what well, uh, most people would call the two authors just the ones who outline, you know, and then there, some people call it seat of the pants writing, which I think is stupid. Joe Haldeman, another excellent author. The yeah, it's, it's, 
that really what it is, it's like night driving. You've got a map and you're, you, don't have, you, you know where you're going. You can only see what the headlights show you, but that's enough. You just keep following the light and you, you know, and looking for the signs that say we're going over here for the, your destination. And that's what I am. I'm a night driving author. A night driving author with <laughs> unbelievably, unbelievably skilled uh, prose and, and storytelling capabilities. So I'm so excited that we were able to connect. And um, the whole reason I started a science fiction bookstore was to highlight really cool stories. And um, you, you are an awesome author. So thank you for, for you. interviewing with me today. And if you're watching this, don't forget to like and follow and subscribe because we want to highlight more authors like Kit Kerr because she's got 20 plus books out there for you to explore. And I hope that uh, you check out Polar City Blues because it is a really fun cyberpunk novel. Thank you so much for watching today, Kit. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Brian. All right, from Ohio to California, look at us crossing the country virtually. Hey, cyberpunk. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Kit. Thank you. Bye-bye.